supposing this is a workpiece that will be fed through the router, we are going to have two blocks like this. Grain running this way, of course. These blocks will hold it together, and then this is just a scrap piece of plywood from a previous project that will be used to make up the rest of the clamping device, and it'll just clamp in like this. Okay, I want to take you through how this works. At the front, I've already cut. I run it through the router using the rabbit bit and already uh, there are slots in it. So there are a few different ways that you can use this. You would get your end grain piece like this. So now that's in there. I'm going to push it down to the bottom so that your workpiece is flush with the bottom and you're ready to go ahead and use it. You can feed it in by keeping your left hand firmly placed on top of the workpiece and keeping it flat on your router surface. The other hand is guiding the right block and applying pressure going into the router because you're feeding that way to the left. If you do those two things, the left hand and the right hand, you will have control of the piece the whole way through. Now, you can have it up against a fence. If you're going to cut all the way through, you can use the fence as the sacrificial fence. That's one way to use it. The other way to use it is to bring it through, is to have your workpiece sticking out at the end so that it's almost a letter T and you're going to maneuver the piece like this. You're going to push it in and you're going to work it this way. This is the way I like to use it because it gives me more control over the work piece in general and I can guide it. Most of all, I like it because I can see what's going on right here. If the fence, if this is all the way to the end of the piece, I can't really see what's going on with my cut. So this way, I've got some distance between me and the router. I'm able to control the workpiece and I can see what's going on at all times. So let's give this a test drive. So that went really smoothly. <laughs> it was very easy to control the piece. That controlled it amazingly well. I'm um, really impressed with that. I started so that I was just a little bit from the inside. I could have left a little more of a lip here. I probably would normally. And then on one end I would have an open piece. And you'll see why that is. I'll show you the joinery um, portion of this. But I'm going to do one more test cut. Other woodworkers you'll see who will take a sacrificial piece and just run through like this. But the problem is there's nothing stopping it from pushing the piece up and out towards you. You've got this guard is sitting there. It's not going to pop up very easily and if it does it won't go very far. Now if you want your grain on your tenon to run the right way, you've got to cut your tenons in a certain way and just so happens I've got the right tool for the job. If you watched last week's video on how to make a bridle joint jig 
this is the bridal joint jig, but it turns out it's really great for all kinds of things, including cutting floating tenons. Using a piece of scrap to cut my floating tenons, I already have one tenon cut, so I know the size that I need. You can set up a stop block if you're going to cut a whole bunch of these. First thing to do is put my loose tenon in. And mind you, this is just scrap wood, but that's pretty darn good. So now we have our through tenon but on the bottom side, nothing. On the inside, seamless. The top, you get to see the joinery. So there you have it. Um, improving the technique that I already showed you using the router table, the rabbit bit, and people were a little bit concerned about cutting end grain. Some people don't do it at all. And my advice is, if you're not comfortable doing anything in woodworking, don't do it. That includes cutting end grain. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. However, if you want to keep better control of your workpiece when you're cutting the end grain, making a simple jig like this will get the job done quite nicely. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and have a great day.